Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you three quick tips to help you translate Figma designs into your application builds. Step one, we wanna start with our structure. Let's say that we're working with a landing page here. We might be looking at this and say, wow, this is a lot for us to actually build. But the reality is we can break this apart into different sections. Designs have logical breaking points and we can tackle this the same way that we do with our applications. So looking at our landing page, you'll notice that we have seven different sections. We have a header, we have a welcome section, we have some other feature sections, and then we have a footer. This is exactly how we would construct a build in our application. If I flip over to my code, you'll notice that we structured this the exact same way, where we have our nav bar, we have our welcome screen, and each of these are gonna be composed of other components, probably from somewhere else in our code base. If I click into our welcome component, you'll notice that I'm using a card element and a list element. These are probably things that somebody has already built and I can reuse them again. By starting from that outside perspective and then working my way in, it becomes a lot easier to break off different chunks of what I'm building and be able to figure out a schedule for how I want to build those. Tip number two, we wanna set up any of our global styles. When you open up a file in Figma, you can open the variable table and you can see all the information about all the colors that were used locally in that file. We can also see information about different modes. Maybe our application has a light mode and a dark mode. And then we can grab all these color values and we actually plug them into our style files in order to use them again and again. So opening up our global file, you'll notice that I've set up all of the same colors. Now I can call those in different style elements or in the code itself. Regardless of what type of CSS framework you're using, whether it's just raw CSS or something like Tailwinds, this is going to make it much easier to be able to reuse colors again and again. Step three, we want to think about responsiveness. When we look at something like our header here, we may have questions about what happens as the screen grows or shrinks. In Figma, we have a capability called auto layout. Auto layout gives us the ability to have a set position. And you'll notice that the width between our logo here and the menu bar is set to automatic. So as that starts to grow or shrink, it's gonna maintain the same distance, keeping those at the edge, just like what you'd call justify between in code. How do we translate something like this into our code file? Well, if I pull up my header element, you'll notice that I've broken this down in three ways. First, we have our display where we're calling this flex. So that means we want it to grow and shrink as we respond to the screen sizes. Next, we set our maximum width to 1440 pixels. This is actually the width that was in our design. So we know that maybe that's as large as we want it to get. So if the screen grows past that, we should keep it centered and it should stay at that maximum width. And finally, we set our width at 100%. With something like a header, we know that it's gonna contain the whole element so we can have it fill the entire thing. So those are just a few tips in order to how to get started building from a design and actually implementing it in code. One of the other things that we should talk about is what we call the invisible states. Some things are not gonna be readily available from static files. For instance, we don't know if this menu has specific hovers, if it's gonna open modals, or if it's gonna to navigate to a new page. What you really should be doing is working within Figma in dev mode to be able to communicate with your designers to uncover those invisible states. So I can add a comment here asking, does this open a new window or is it a modal? And then my designers can respond back and we don't have to worry about working off of outdated information. Another feature that designers can use is annotations. Annotations will not only be able to allow for things like comments, but it will also give us things like properties as well as accessibility requirements or interactions that we wanna call out specifically. This makes it a lot easier for us to design how the behavior of our application should align with the design of our application. Hopefully you found these tips helpful. For more information about dev mode or any other features, head over to figma.com slash dev mode. Thanks for watching.